Oh my goodness! It's so <laughs> this cold! This is by far the coldest day that we've had so far. It's like two degrees at the moment. It's freezing! But we're in the town of Caldas de Reis and we're walking 19 kilometers to a town called Padron. It's our third last stage of the Camino. It's pretty crazy. But we are feeling a little bit beaten, oh, especially yeah. after yesterday. Our feet are bruised, our backs are tired, but. We're within 50 k's now, so we'll hop on a skip till we get there. <laughs> <Woohoo>. <laughs> Muffin I've ever seen. <laughs> Drop your rubbish again, Sarah. Unbelievable. Look at this thing. <laughs> Isn't that it's gorgeous? So little. <laughs> How come you got a muffin? I only got a biscuit. Oh, sorry. And you got a biscuit too. <laughs> ah, I can see what's going on here. Special treat now. <laughs> Look at it. That's great. You've got to send that to me. Gotta send that to me. Oh Please. man, look at that! So I tried to steal a bloody mandarin from the only woman who was guarding her neighbor's mandarin tree in the whole oh, valley. And I'm looking at them there and there's hundreds of them. Then I, I went to offer her money and she got even more incentive. It's gonna sound very ph philosophical, but it's at times like this when we're walking next to big highways, like this one, that it feels like we're existing outside of society in a sense yeah you got people just speeding along going from point a to point b as fast as they can not taking in what's around them and here we are we've got our entire worlds on our back and we're focusing on each step each little part of the journey and it just feels like two completely different worlds what do you think yeah you put it really well and it's 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 weird but it's cool to think about at the same time yeah such a beautiful section just in the forest so so pretty hello hello yes <laughs> hello. <laughs> bye mm. so today's felt pretty easy so far to be completely honest compared to yesterday today is just like a walk in the park uh, we've got a couple of ticks past four kilometers left and then we're done with the 19 kilometer stage it's just kind of flown past we've been going for four hours now it and doesn't i can't really, really like put it. my finger on why because it was really cold when we started out so we were going Whoa. yeah today has probably been one of our fastest days so far so mm. we're getting fitter and stronger it doesn't mean that it's any easier than what it was, but I think we're just getting fitter and stronger and we're able to walk faster for longer distances. That still hurts just as much as what it did in the beginning, but it's just, we're probably learning how to deal with that hurt. Hmm. Maybe. You couldn't hear anything that you were saying there. Okay, good. Because I think I'm on. Wow, that's Sound impressive. What time are they open? Four o'clock. Do they open at four? 
Yeah. Down about our last four, 1600. What time is it? Well, 2.30. Oh, okay. The door's open. So we can at least sit down, I think. It's unusual, I have to close the door up. We're gonna go get a Guinness. Oh, wow. Yum, yum. Gracias. Cheers. Cheers to 24 kilometers left. So. 24. 24. Point four. Point four. Okay, so we said that we we're gonna stop complaining, but I've got one more complaint. So we're in our hostel, it is quarter to nine, it is zero degrees at the moment, and our checkout time was actually 45 minutes ago. You know, they turned the lights on at half past six this morning, and they turned the heaters on, and they expected us to be out at eight o'clock when the sun hadn't even risen yet. Now I understand these rules in the high season where you just need to get people out but not during the low season when there's literally nobody in the hostel and it is freezing and cold and dark. Okay, that's my graph out the way. We have 17 kilometers to walk today. Boombi. Oh, sorry, I'll see some snacks and things over there. We don't have anything for the day. How many did you get? Six. <sighs> we are seven kilometers into our walk for the day, and this is our first break. But we found some exciting things. I don't know what this is called. But we've never seen it before and we've never tasted anything like it. It's kind of got like layers and layers and layers. And I think it might be dipped or soaked in something. I don't actually even know what to describe it as, but it's just so good. Mm. Would you say it's one of the best desserts you've ever had? It's really good. Would it's rank really it right unique. up there? I've never tasted anything like it before. Would rank it right up there as one of the best desserts we've ever had? Something so simple. It's really good. So if you do know what they are called, just let us know. Something else pretty momentous has happened. We are into the teens. Under 20 kilometers left. Yo, we're getting so close now. So we are just coming up on the second one of these that we've seen. It's a completely self-sufficient or self-service station for pilgrims. So the last one we saw they had a shower, toilets, all sorts of things in there, vending machines, but you just have to pay for all of those things. Yeah, so here's the vending machine. The one we saw yesterday had packs of like lasagna and had burgers, like proper food, and then it had microwaves inside and yeah. There's fridges, but it's locked. There's a TV, you can have to sit down. And you can even do your stamps as well. So. I feel like I've got stage fright. I hope I do this okay. Oh. Ooh. Very dull. Oh. <laughs> so, a little bit of drama to spice up the last section of oh. our Camino. We are heading towards an albergue that seems like it could be open but also seems like it could be closed. And there are very few hostels or albergues left between now, between where we are right now and Santiago. Loads of hotels with expensive prices, not lots of albergues. So, yeah, and just for a quick clarification, we've only got 15 k's left until Santiago. But they, what they say is that you don't want to walk into Santiago. What? what? <laughs> giving me big eyes. I'm just listening to what you're saying. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to walk into Santiago being tired. Yeah. So if we had to walk there today, we'd do 24 kilometers, and we'd most likely arrive between four and five this evening. Whereas you'd actually want to rather arrive at midday. 
which is our plan tomorrow, which is why we broke it up and try to get to and are trying to get to this albergue later. Yeah. So if that one's not open, we'll have to keep walking. <sighs> Let's yeah. just see what happens. <sighs> Where have you let us down? Did you already see that that was blocked off? I haven't seen an arrow for a little while. <laughs> Back down to that. Well, this is the way we're going now. Somebody's felled a tree right on the path. <laughs> Box over. <laughs> yeah, so one thing that we've noticed as well with this Camino is that some places are so well marked, like it's impossible to get lost. And you go through a section like this where there's absolutely nothing, there are no arrows anywhere. So this is when you need some sort of a map or your phone to just get you through these sections. Come on. Come on. Come on. That over there, folks, is a single digit. We started out with three digits and we're down to one. Oh my goodness. Our last town place. Well, Camino. This is it. We've got 200 meters to figure out if we can stay in this town tonight or not. I really hope it's open. And the wind has been blowing for like the past hour and a bit as well so it's like dropped the temperature considerably. An icy icy breeze. Please can it be open. This looks like the entrance here. Actually believed that it could be closed. <sighs> Marek's trying to make a plan. All hope is not lost. We've just managed to find an apartment. It's going to be expensive. A three bedroom apartment for 65 euros but because Andy the Aussie is here as well we're going to split the cost with him. So it's only going to be like 42 or something for the two of us. So it's not that bad. We could easily just walk to Santiago but it means arriving there at like between four and five this afternoon which won't be fun. We'd rather want to get there feeling nice, refreshed, relaxed and just take in the moment you know we don't want to arrive there being tired so we're just gonna have to bite the bullet and pay a little bit extra and stay in a very nice place as well might I add. Excited. Mm -hmm. And we're right next door to a massive supermarket as well so you know what that means. Lots of donuts. <laughs> oh yes, like it. I went too fast there, actually. From public hostels every night to this, what the heck? This is pure luxury. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Look at this kitchen. Look at this kitchen. I'm so stoked. I wish we could stay here for a few nights. <laughs> It feels really weird to think we're just gonna walk for like two hours and then we'll just be done and we won't have to walk anymore. It's just weird. 
It's a weird feeling. It's two weeks today. Exactly. Yeah. Two weeks ago, today, we left Porto. 233 kilometers ago. It's also just crazy to think that we walked that far. Here we go. I don't even know which way we go. Is it that way? Gonna be a bit of a strange one, but it's so nice walking out here, feeling just how cold it is. Because the heating inside that apartment was superb. So many of the places that we stayed in so far, there has been no heating. So it has been absolutely freezing in the hostels, but this has felt like, it's just felt like a bit of a treat, really. And yesterday I felt like we were cheating by coming to stay in such a nice place before the end of the Camino. And Andy summed it up pretty well this morning as well. He said he just feels so disconnected from the Camino at the moment. He doesn't feel like a pilgrim because he's staying in such a nice place. And this morning I realized like, yes, it feels like we're cheating. You know, we stayed in a really nice place, but it's made me realize that I'm ready for what's next. I'm ready to not be staying in hostels anymore. I'm ready to not have these little inconveniences. It's been fun while it lasted, but it's time for the next chapter. Santiago? Still got 7Ks to go. And I can't quite tell whether that's it or whether it's further. Oh, we just kind of walked around the corner and bam, there's a city in front of us. We can even kind of see a cathedral just over there. Oh, there. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. We could pretty much just make a video series of the different dogs and animals we've encountered yeah. in two weeks. We probably could, eh? You're so cute. Look at how tiny is. If I'm being completely honest, I don't really know how to film this next sequence. You know, it's been two weeks of us walking 240 kilometers to get to this point. And this is like the, the pinnacle of a culmination of an entire journey coming down to this one moment there's a little bit of pressure in a thing like this trying to film a moment like that and I don't know how to do it I think it comes down to the fact that the Camino is everyone's personal joint journey so on the outside it might not look that crazy if you think about it for like a split second and you don't really try and empathize it can be like well you're just walking you know it's everyone's personal journey it's your personal experience and struggles that you push through to get here i don't know if you can really capture that i don't know because you have this idea in your mind of how to play out you know have this music and having a flashback of all your memories during the thing but that's just for the video in the moment i don't know how do you film something like that how do you truly capture it? Okay, so throughout this Camino, Sarah has said that she doesn't necessarily feel like a full pilgrim because she hasn't been wearing a big backpack. Now, I've been trying to tell her like, it really doesn't matter what you're carrying. All that matters is that you wake up every day, get your stamps and get to Santiago. That's what being a pilgrim is. It's a journey, it's not necessarily what you're carrying. So now, we're going to try to swap bags and see what she thinks if she would have enjoyed walking for 14 days with a big bag. I don't know if it'll be a true reflection because we've only got four and a half to go. I wonder if I'll make it four and a half days with this on. Mm. <laughs> That's what you could have had. I must admit, on initial, like, putting it on, it's so much more comfortable than that backpack. But, let's walk 4Ks and see how I feel. You're going to take it all the way to Santiago? Yeah. Will you be bummed not to carry it in? What will like, make, make you the happiest? I legit want to carry it. Do it. Okay. Let's go. I think this whole thing would have been a different journey if I was carrying 
a pack this heavy because I can feel the weight. It's heavy. My leg muscles would have been like boof, boof, boof. Huge. <laughs> I feel really wrong. Like, it feels wrong to carry Marek's pack over the finish line when he's carried it the whole way. So it's not about what I can and can't do. I'm definitely strong enough to carry it the last two Ks. Yes, you are. Just so that I'm announcing that for us all to know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Doesn't feel right. There you go. We are now within 200 meters. We can see the cathedral. It's not quite the way we were feeling, to be completely honest. I feel hungry and grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish that wasn't the case, but it just is. <laughs> Should we try and get around? Where's the main entrance? Wow. It's very impressive. It's huge. Fully complete. Now. That is it. We're done. We're not gonna wake up tomorrow, put our bags on, and walk. <sighs> and I'm just so hungry. <laughs> I'm just so. Oh my goodness me! I think we got that on video. What did we just do? A flip. What's that? What's that? Yo! <laughs> Whoa! Oh, I'm so. Happy to be here. Hold on. I'm so proud of you too. Alright, it is time to get our final step of the Camino. Like when we started the Camino, we were expecting some old man to be in the yeah. thing saying, You can help pass! And we are expecting now to go into the church to get our final stamp with another old man standing there, and now it's just going to another building to get it. <laughs> Build up all these expectations in your mind for how you think it's going to play be my out. Best advice, so just set all your expectations <laughs> Way down. so low that they can just be exceeded. Final thoughts. Relieved, happy to be here, proud of the journey that we just completed. Yeah. And what it's, else? It's settling in, hungry and cold. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, it is what it is. What's your thoughts? <laughs> I think I smell. <laughs> I think this t shirt is three days old. <laughs> It has now been 24 hours since we finished the Camino. We are sitting right outside the cathedral, busy looking at it. And I didn't feel quite right to just end the video the way that it did after being on such a massive journey. It's been two weeks, 240 kilometers of walking, and we are here. We've arrived in Santiago, and it's been a truly epic, memorable, huge, adventure we've pushed ourselves harder than we pushed ourselves before you know to be able to walk that many kilometers in such a short period of time is something i never thought we'd ever do and it's cool to think that we have done it now. it doesn't feel like i thought it would no nothing about this camino was anything like i expected it to be literally nothing it's just an odd feeling because we anticipated it so much it was all we could talk about for weeks and weeks and weeks it was something that we really look forward to and I'm not saying it didn't live up to my I suppose I am saying it didn't live up to our expectations because I just it just wasn't anything like I expected it to be not necessarily in a bad way not necessarily in a good way it just wasn't what I expected it to be 
think Andy summed it up pretty well yesterday because when he finished his first Camino, honestly, he expected there to be like children standing, clapping and cheering, like having people come out and welcome you in to say, well done and finishing the Camino. But there's nothing like, nothing like that. You just walk here, you see it, <laughs> and it's done. And he said it taught him humility. You know, you go on this massive voyage where you're disconnected from society, where you feel like you're living in an alternate realm almost type of thing, and you get here and you're just back to normal life again. He, the words he used was like it brings you back down to earth and makes you realize you're just a drop in the sea of life. And I actually wrote this in our newsletter the other day. At the end of the day, all that we left with are memories. And the memories of this Camino is something that we'll remember for the rest of our lives. And I couldn't be more proud of us for coming to do such a thing. So if you've watched this entire series, if it's been a number of videos, if it's been one long video, <laughs> we still don't know at this point. Do. <laughs> so if you've watched all the way to this point and have seen us and joined us in on this whole venture, thank you. We really appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. <laughs>